Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. As a guitar YouTuber, I get the privilege of testing out a lot of expensive guitars and sharing my thoughts with you guys. This though is a $200 guitar and I kind of love it. Let's take a closer look. So the Squire Affinity series is a line of guitars that I and probably a lot of you have, well, an affinity with. Whoa, do you think that's where they got the name from? That's genius. Because for years, the Affinity series has been a top choice for beginners and modders alike. They're inexpensive. I think only the Bullets and Mini models are priced lower than the Affinities. Fender makes a ton of them. You see them everywhere, and I mean everywhere. They're in guitar centers all over the US. They're in Best Friends Music, the shop I used to frequent in China. One in five guitarists around the world start with the Squire Affinity as their very first electric guitar, which is incredible given how many entry-level models there are on the market. That's also a statistic I've just entirely made up, but honestly, I don't think it's too far from the truth. The Affinities have been around for decades with various model, spec, and color combos, and for 2021, they've just refreshed the line, adding a Jazzmaster plus top strats and this Telecaster Deluxe. <laughs> These have actually been really difficult to find this year, so massive thanks to Fender for sending one over for us to check out together and for sponsoring the video. So for specs, we've got a poplar body, a bolt-on maple neck, 21 fret laurel fingerboard, very standard stuff for an entry-level Squire. From the spec sheet, I thought poplar body meant this would be a very light guitar. That's been my experience with poplar guitars so far. In reality though, it's actually not super light. It's not super heavy either. It's around seven pounds, about the same weight as my Fender Player Series Tele. I understand poplar can be a dirty word on the spec sheet, but literally, if you hadn't told me it was poplar, I wouldn't have noticed. I would have assumed it's alder because that's what it feels like. The laurel fingerboard is a bit more noticeable from traditional rosewood though. And that's kind of because it doesn't have that open pour thing going on that rosewood does. It's smoother, kind of like ebony, but with the softness of rosewood. Basically, in terms of feel, I think it's a great substitute for rosewood fingerboards. And it's also quite plentiful, unlike the slow growing and very endangered rosewood which is mainly the furniture industry's fault, but we'll go there. In 
Indian Laurel is a relatively fast growing fig, actually, and to Fender's credit, they did this a while ago, but it's great to see the big names in the guitar industry continue to move away from Rosewood on their affordable models even after the CITES restrictions have been lifted for musical instruments. The Cynics will still say it's a money-based decision, but it's still awesome to see sustainable alternatives, and the tight grain laurel feels great as a fingerboard would. The neck has a modern C shape, and I love how the headstock is gloss to give it a nice shiny look, but the neck itself is satin for smooth playability. And I did notice that the skunk stripe on the back of the neck, it's not fully flush, it's off by about half a millimeter, if that. It doesn't affect playing at all. You can feel it though, and I've never come across that before, so I thought it was worth pointing out. And that's really the only quality thing I could find with this sub $300 guitar, which is incredible. I mean, look at that neck pocket, that's a tight fit. I mean, I guess there is this pickup selector that's uh, horizontal. I also don't know if that's by design or not. Even if that's unintentional, all I need to do is loosen and rotate that at some point. It's no big deal. No problems with the setup either. It was all fine right out of the box. Literally took it out, plugged it in, and recorded a demo track. And I love how the fingerboard edges have been ever so slightly rolled, so it doesn't feel like they just took a plank of laurel and slapped it on top of a maple neck and called it a day. Entry-level guitars used to feel like that. It was so, so bad. Like, they just assemble it, and technically all the specs were there. Just ship it to the customer, they'll sort it out. Thankfully, those days are gone, at least when it comes to the legit brands like Squire. Honestly, this is just a really comfortable guitar, and it was a great player right out of the box. That's really important for beginners who might not know how to set up their own guitars or to do their own maintenance, or even experienced players who might not know how to set up their own guitars or do their own maintenance. What? I don't know who you're talking about. We move. The best thing about this, though, well, actually, no, the playability is the best thing, but the other best thing about this is how it looks. First off, the neck backplate has a Squire logo engraved into it. it looks really cool. Even my Jim Root Jazzmaster American Maid doesn't have that. But more and actually important, entry-level guitars used to be limited to just solid gloss colors, usually black, and sometimes transparent stains. Lately, Squire's been using more metallic colors to freshen things up, and it looks so Good. This one's Charcoal Frost, it also comes in Burgundy Mist, and these are exciting colors for a $200 guitar, especially given there are no other Telecaster Deluxes at any price point that are in these two metallic colors. That means not only does it look good, but the body alone in exclusive colors makes the Affinity Tele Deluxe a fantastic candidate as a mod project platform. <laughs> I think that's exactly what I'll be doing given how surprisingly unique the Affinity is. And let me explain what I mean by that. This is the most affordable Tele Deluxe in Fender slash Squire's current lineup. And there are a couple of differences between this and a traditional Telecaster Deluxe. Here's my American Professional 2 Telecaster Deluxe for comparison, as you can see, a little different. The Telecaster Deluxe was introduced in 1973, and at the time it was a weird model. It had the four knob control layout, which was more associated with another large American brand. It had the giant 70s headstock, which I actually really like. So that's the first difference between the Affinity and a normal one. This has the traditional tiny Tele headstock. Disappointing. Telecaster Deluxes are also known for the two wide range humbucker pickup configuration. Now these in the Affinity are not wide range humbuckers, these are regular humbuckers so they're super easy to replace. You don't even need to modify the pick guard or get a new one like you do with the regular Telecaster Deluxe. Wide range humbuckers have a different mounting screw layout if you haven't seen them before. On this though, your favorite bare knuckles or EMGs become straight drop in replacements and it's super easy to turn this into a bona fide chug machine. All you need to do is make sure the bridge is F-spaced. And it actually chugs fairly well with the stock ceramic humbuckers. I'm just saying if you wanna go full wage war, that's definitely something you can do easily with this guitar. <laughs> Speaking
speaking of Wage War, you can see in the Gravity music video, they're using classic vibes tuned to drop A sharp. And they seem to be stock for the video, but I think they were EMG artists at the time. Doesn't matter. Regardless, what I'm saying is that Squire Telecaster Deluxes are great modding guitars and they chug, especially given the bridge is this six saddle string three design that's more comfortable for the chugs than the ashtray and three barrel design you usually find on Fender Tele Deluxes. So actually I've got a spare set of EMGs I think would be fun to throw in here. Subscribe, hit the like button if you wanna see that. You know what, if we hit 2000 likes, I'll do a mod video and then give it away. How's that sound? <laughs>But for now though, that is the end of this video. There's something really satisfying about an inexpensive guitar that's great looking and is a ton of fun to play already. And kind of along the same lines, there's something really exciting about a guitar you know has a ton of mod potential. Like, I'm already excited for what I know this guitar can and will be. Budget guitars in general have just gotten so good, and what's particularly cool about Squire compared to other brands is that their guitars are available locally worldwide. So whether you're in the US or you're in Europe, you've got a local distributor. You don't have to order it and have it shipped from halfway across the world. So yeah, if you're looking for a fun mod project or a quality beater, Toman, Sweetwater links in the description for more info. Massive shout out to Jordan Joyner and the rest of the incredible patrons that make this and every other video possible. Like actually, without you guys, I wouldn't be able to bring on Luke Kramer, who's done an awesome job with the mix, or Connor, who's done an awesome job editing the video. So really appreciate that support. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.